So it was a trespass offering for these two poor. So one becomes a sin offering, one becomes a burnt offering. Right. Well, yeah, and they're, they're all on hatan. That's why there's two. But wouldn't you have to bring those first? A sin offering and a burnt offering. A burnt offering, a grain offering, a sin offering, fellowship. I don't know. I don't, I, do you have to bring all of them? I don't know. You've got to do this one first before you do anything else. But maybe right? you're just coming in and, oh, by the way, if you're a poor person, while we're talking about the poor people, whenever they came and did their burnt ones, they could bring a dove. So it was not mentioned up there in the burnt offering section. Well, Mary and Joseph brought the two total doves. Yeah. All right. Moving down into verse 14. We're bringing a ram without defect and what else? You're sitting 14? Proper value is silver. It's restitution. Twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Right, but we got to bring it. Making restitution. And if you read in verse 17, if a person sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though he does not know it, he is guilty and will be held responsible. He is to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him for the wrong he has committed unintentionally, and he will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. He has been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. So we've got a lot of different things going on. Because it was unintentional. Get it all taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the main thing is not to keep on doing it. It's say, well, if God knows my heart. But it's to see if they're good above all things. So that's the question for all of us. Have we done what needs to be done to move on from our past? Unintentional ignorance <coughs> that we didn't know. We definitely need to stop and say, admit, our guilt, and ask for forgiveness of that. We will not be forgiven. This is the confessing of sin. You had to come to the priest. And yeah. Flip over to uh, Hebrews, if you don't mind, and we'll finish up here. Oops. We're almost done, Brayden, I promise. <laughs> we are going to... Which one I want to start with? Let's go to... Hebrews... Chapter 10. Hebrews 10. That's where we're going to back up in Hebrews chapter 9 a little bit. And then Jay, this will go to what you were talking about just now. Mm. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of his creation. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more, then, 
will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. So the blood of goats and bulls and ashes ceremonially cleans the outside. The blood of Messiah cleanses the inside, the conscience, the conscience, our thought, our mind. Sort of like the picture that he rebukes the Pharisees with, you clean the outside of the cup, but you don't clean the inside of the cup. You do the, the sacrifices, you take care of all this stuff, but you don't, you don't come in submission and give honor and admit wrongdoing because a guilty conscience, you've heard that phrase before? Somebody has a guilty conscience that's chosen their actions. You know, going on into, into chapter 10, um, let's just read, I think, 1 and 2. I'll read a little bit more. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers had been cleansed once for all, would have been cleansed, cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those, sac those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Is it impossible for atonement? Is that what this is saying? It's impossible for, to make this work. I hope not. <laughs> Why not? But it says it's for forgiveness. Because we're human, we continue to sin. So those could not make us clean on the inside. Exactly. Up here. But it's still, I mean, I think it's important to point out, but he still points this all out because it still needs to be done. We a lot of times we stress this, oh, yeah, no, you gotta do what's on the inside, you gotta do what's on the inside. They're equally important. You're to do both. It's like even Brad was talking about, you know, the halak and the agadah, the walk, but the heart. The heart. Yep. They're still integral. They're both, you know, one's not meant to be really stressed above the other. They actually are in concert. Yeah. These things can't cleanse your conscience, can't cleanse your feeling of guilt. It, on the outside, this cleanses your guilt on the outside. Right, and we've got one more big question. Here. It's because they come together. They always come together. You don't ever, you, like it shows right. throughout every one of these, yep. they're not alone, ever. You're not going to bring in Allah right. if it really hasn't started from the inside. Absolutely. Yeah, and exactly. Circumcision isn't an outward thing until it's an inward decision. Yeah. You know, I was circumcised because my dad did it. Yes, but at the same time, my inward circumcision happened, and that's why the outward's there. He said, that's Absolutely. why it was important. And a lot of people get hung up on Paul's interpretation of that or his, his rebuking of the other side of it. Right. Which all he was saying was, why are you putting so much stress on the outward instead of the inward? Not that they're both hand in hand. It starts on the both. inside, the outside will follow. Right. You know, then don't do these pagan things first. They're going to hear Moses. They'll eventually get it. Um, just one thing that I love, it, the, the word for atonement is kafar, and it's, it's the same word, kafir. It's that same picture and image of the pitch that he covered the inside and the outside of the ark with. Or, and Moses, Moses' little, little boat, his little thing. <laughs> That's why he didn't have a leaky ark. That's why he didn't have a leaky ark, for those of you who watched the Bible show on history. <laughs> Scene one, the ark's leaking. What's that? Mister. I have a question. All of this was important. It's important for us to know now. But now that we don't have the temple, and we know that that will probably be I'm not sure if there will be sacrifices. I'm not. I heard that there was, I heard that there 
understanding of why they had to do that. So what does this mean to me now? Like, what is this? I'm going to ask you a different you, question. Okay. Instead of how does this apply to you, yeah. how do you apply to it? Okay. Because if, if you look at how does it apply to me, yeah. where's your focus? On yourself. How do, I, how do I make this happen in my life? I can't go to a temple and offer up a burnt offering because, one, I don't have flocks and herds, so I can't do that. How do I do this? That's where we have to look at it. How do I, how do, I do this? Yes, Ed. The answer is... Right. Drum roll, please. Uh, 25 squares, 105 words we got up there, okay? God is involved in our lives in the garden, the tent, and the tabernacle, and the future. And we need to be involved with him, okay? That's what he's saying. I'm involved. So, well, to me, you know, you go through the steps. You go through Like you approach him uh, with the, the tabernacle first, you know, you, you don't just rush right into his presence. You, you go through the bird offering, you know, that's the only way you can even that he acknowledges who you are. You know, he didn't say five times, go to your room or go upstairs. Okay, <laughs> wasn't that cut and dry? <laughs> Fred. Also, here in the uh, the only reason we don't sacrifice today is because there's no temple. They sacrificed up until 70 AD when the temple was destroyed, even the disciples. Okay. If, what a question, I put it here, when they rebuild the temple, which I think will be fairly soon, I think it will be built before Christ comes. When they rebuild the temple and start the sacrifices that the Antichrist is supposed to stop, according to the Bible, what are the people throughout the world that are animal lovers, what are they going to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they're killing all these animals. They will, but how does that answer Misty's question? What's that? Well, how does it affect us? They're going to, I think they're going to do it pretty soon on our day. Mm. I think our watch is going to see the temple rebuilt and they sacrifice and cut back. But how, okay, hands down, hands down, hands down, hands down. Um, we are to apply ourselves to this book. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Miss Period. Miss was not here for the earlier portions, so that's why she doesn't connect with them like we do. Right. Which is fine, but... Um, what I want to do. Can I answer the question? Please do. Okay, because you weren't here, and that's okay, no big deal, we could repeat ourselves. Um, but what we came to realize is the burnt offering is offered first. And that one is how we worship God, how we approach Him. And none of the others can be done until we are first worshiping Him as He says to worship Him. So that's the burnt offering. Once we are living our lives in total worship, the way he wants to be worshipped, then we can come before him for fellowship. Then we can come before him for forgiveness. And that's what he's laying out here. Does that answer your question? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, and Sorry, I wasn't doing that very well. And, and the purpose <laughs> is to understand how these were done and what they were. Because like she says, the Olah is the foundation for all of them. Well, inherent in that, it's totally consumed. There's no sherry, the priests don't get any, this isn't for their sustenance. This is completely consumed for his, to, a sweet savor, an aroma pleasing to God. It's to create an environment to where he can come out to you and meet with you. So from that, from that standpoint, understanding what's done in the physical of a um, a sacrifice. Well, I, I have no doubt that you can actually put that into your life. How you completely get rid of yourself in praise and worship, or well, in, in worship, which is humility to honor Him. That's the beginning. That's just the foundation. 
to go for any of the rest of these. You know, so that's really the purpose in understanding this for us without having even having a, you know, because now you're the tabernacle. So the, all that stuff should be done like Ty's does a lot of times, or like when they talk about how they envision things when they go in prayer, when they go in to enter into his presence, they actually visually imagine that they're going in offering korban to begin that process of entering into his presence just to worship him for their, you know, their daily. Two other things in here that definitely apply to us today. It applied back then, it applies today. Um, one, he says, you know, if you sin unintentionally, when you are made aware, not if you are made aware. So number one, his spirit is either going to convict us of that sin, or if we, are not, if we don't come to that conviction through the spirit, he will send a person into our lives who will say, you're not walking as you should be. So he says he will make clear to us when we are sinning unintentional, if our heart is right. So he, we, we, cannot, we don't have to worry that we're going to continue to sin unintentionally and continue to offend him, because he'll, he'll bring it to our attention. Second, he says, on the day that you realize you've sinned against your brother, take care of it. He doesn't say, you know, do it that Shabbat, do it within a week. He says, that day. Because the longer we take to go take care of that issue, the easier it is to justify not doing it. Okay. Kind of looking at the amount of time and effort and everything that it takes to be part of this. What is it? You know, they had a lot invested in, in this. And yet, well, we did something wrong and we just quickly, oh, give me God and go right on. Are we really, are we taking that so for granted that we're not really understanding this? I think we were taught that way. Yeah. That's what Dottie was talking about earlier. It's just, oh, I sin. I'm forgiven. Move on. Isn't that some of the best? That's the, that's the other part of the hope, though, mm -hmm. because it also says, you know, in that day when you find out that you've sinned the mm -hmm. You know, I don't know about the rest of you, but when we think of our family, mm -hmm. we think of those that aren't in Torah yet, mm -hmm. we think of those to come, that's part of that hope that it's talking about. They're going to come to the realization it's on God's mm -hmm. time, not ours. Thank God. But uh, <laughs> it, 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 it No matter how much we push, it's not right. on our time. Right, I know. Yeah. Uh, but that's also <laughs> why these things are laid out the way they are, so that, because I love what you just said, that absolutely makes sense. Because yeah, when we sin, are we really sorry? Or is it meant more than actually giving up a lamb? Or I'm poor and I can only get two turtle doves, but that was my last two turtle doves? You know what I mean? That's a lot more sacrifice than oh my spirit being convicted and no one gets to see it. So Yeah, so just to go into that, what Jay's saying, what Ty's saying, you know, we don't we don't have herds and flocks and, and so we don't how do we how do we apply this to our own lives, okay? So so what are, I mean how many times have we heard this time is money? You know, okay, so if that's the case, if you're a really busy person, if your time is really valuable <clears throat> Give your time to God. You know, if he's going to use the natural to teach the spiritual, you know, what is the spiritual in here we've yet to see? Yeah. yeah, well, just, you know, just like you're saying, it, you know, to do the offering, that would take like three hours, something like that. Huh. Who knows? Maybe, yeah, pretty good. If you got a million to three yeah. million people acting, everybody's bringing you start out with taking a rope and going and getting it, and then taking it up there. <laughs> Talk about step one. <laughs> Go find the one that doesn't have the defect in the herd. Yeah. Sylvia. Which I learned something today. My son brought that up one time when I was to him, and I was telling him about the Old Testament, how it's so important to go back because we missed 
the whole message. And he said, and I was talking about the tabernacle. He said, so you're talking about we're going to go back and we're going to sacrifice. And Jesus already did it. We're going to go back and we're going to sacrifice Jesus all over again, like with animals. I said, no, you got it all wrong, son. It's not what I said, I need to start with you from the very beginning so that I can help you understand. I said, because I was there. And I said, I don't want to cut you down because you're still not understanding. Like, I'm still just learning. I said, so we both, you know, we both are learning, and I need to learn more so that I can help you. I said, it's so important to go to the beginning because you missed the whole picture when you just started in the New Testament. Yeah. You missed the whole picture in how, how coming, how you come towards the Lord, how you come in, in reverence and respect. Not take him for granted because we do that. Yeah. We sure do. We're being taught that in the churches. Yeah. That's the way I was taught. <laughs> We're being taught that here. Yeah. yeah. My son gave me an enjoyable, well, a good example of this. He was at a youth group, youth meeting. And they got all the, everybody says, just go ahead and take one of your sins, one of your write it down, fold it up, put it on a little piece of paper, and then this is, you know, one of your secrets, something you don't want to share with everyone. Get it, fold it up, put it up, go up there, and then nail it up on this cross. And then everybody participated in this, and it says, now, every time that you sin, you're putting that nail in Christ. Think about it. And maybe that'll help kind of bring some of this. Well, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm going to go. You know, it's, <coughs> it still hurts. And I, I thought that was a good example of kind of the way they did that. Yeah, it hurts him. So. If you follow that example out, too, I've also heard that even when you take out the nail, you know, if the example I heard was a, a mother put a nail in the into this wooden part every time her daughter went out and dragged and ran around and, and uh, then the daughter straightened up and she took out all the nails but you still have some of the repercussions you still have those holes there and of course you know that isn't quite the same with us because he has removed our sins you know he has put them at the bottom of the sea and all that but it gives you that example of why sin to begin with? You know, because you're going to have repercussions. You know, even though you don't have to, even though you're you're free before God, you're still going to have repercussions. I think that's what this is talking about: the repercussions of sin, how long it takes, how it evolves, how you know this detail is because we don't even begin to realize the holiness of God, the holiness of God, and how. We offend our father, you know, what we offend. Misty. Um, I actually taught this to third graders when I was teaching drug, alcohol, and tobacco prevention. I, I made a heart, and I went around the room, and I said, and I, I told them, I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to let you say whatever you don't like about me, whatever, whatever you can think of. And so this is talking to third graders. They were, oh, I don't like your clothes. I don't like your hair. Your, your eyes aren't pretty. You know, this, that, and the other. And, and every time they did, I crinkled the heart up a little bit better. It hurt my heart. And I went around to every kid, and they all got to tell me something. And in the end, I showed them. I said, you know what? What do you do when, you know, you hurt someone, so you ask them to forgive you? So they said, will you forgive us for, for hurting you and saying those ugly things? And I said, of course, I'll forgive you. And I showed him my heart, and I unfolded it, and I said, but my heart still crumpled. My heart, that still, like, those repercussions, you know, that's still there. You still, you said that, but it's still, it's still there. And those kids were like, they got it. But that's the exact same thing. So it goes back to that verse Eric was just talking about in the first Samuel, that it is better to obey than to bring all these sacrifices. Because the reason you have to bring these is because you sin. So if you know, if you obey to begin with, you don't have to worry about all this. <laughs> oh. yeah. Fred. 
This is the thing, Maggie. Oh, go ahead. Forgiven for his sins, that did not stop his punishment. He still got four children to die. There are repercussions. Isn't that Proverbs? Where you, uh, you reap, you shall sow. Yeah, we're, a, we're a body. Or so you shall reap. It's supposed to be a body. Sometimes we're not real good at being a body, but we're a body. If something happens to one part of the body, it affects something else. Right. He is a just God. <clears throat> He That's is a what just God. Jefferson said, uh, We have a just God. For this reason, I fear for my country. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He is just, and there is punishment due. Um, but I want to get back. <clears throat> just, we'll just we'll end here. We are a body, we are connected, interconnected, interwoven by Him. We each have our own purpose, we each have our own specific tasks, gifts, whatever you want to call them. But things that we do that cause need for these affect other people. You know, if the anointed priest sins, the whole place is guilty. Whether they know it or not, they are. If one of, if I sin, it affects her and him and them and them and them and them, you know. We're all connected. We're all the body. Working together to honor him, to bring him glory. And that's the truth. <laughs>